All right, let's go over 10 things you should do after installing Ubuntu. So now, most Linux distros have gotten to the point where anyone can install and use them. Heck, some distros, like the beginner-friendly ones in particular, are even easier to install than Windows. And Ubuntu is a great example of this. Don't quote me on this, but I think they were like the first distro to have an easy and simple installer. But you still can't take that for granted because there are still some things that you really should do after installing Ubuntu, or any Linux distro for that matter, that the installer just doesn't do for you. And I'm going to be going over that in this video. Now in this video, I'm going to be specifically focusing on Ubuntu, but most of these will apply to other Linux distros as well. But without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, number 10 is install updates. So now, even if you do select the download updates while installing Ubuntu option in the Ubuntu installer, it for whatever reason won't install these updates for you, so you're going to have to do it manually. And you are strongly encouraged to do this, as there are security patches and bug fixes that happen over time. To do this, just go to Show Applications, Software Updater, and then we'll go and check for updates. And then if there are any, it'll offer you the option to install them. So then just click install now. And then the first update will ask you for authentication and it will take a while, but the next updates will be relatively quick. But anyway, this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, and then the first update after install will require you to restart your computer, but most updates after this won't require a reboot. There will be some that will though. But anyway, you're gonna click restart now, and then we'll go ahead and restart. All right, then once we're rebooted, the number nine thing on this list is to disable problem reporting. Now it should give you this option after you install Ubuntu and log into it for the first time. But if you miss that option, you can simply go into settings, privacy, diagnostics, and then just set send error reports to canonical to never. And then while we're here in the settings privacy window, the number eight thing on this list is to enable automatically delete temporary files. To do that, just go into file history and trash in the settings privacy menu, and then turn on automatically delete temporary files. And then I'd recommend setting this period to 30 days. However, if you have a tiny drive, by all means, make it shorter. You can even get it down to like one hour. But generally speaking, 30 days is good enough. This is to prevent temporary files from accumulating and hogging up your disk space. All right, number seven on this list is to enable a firewall. To do this, you're gonna need to install an app from the Ubuntu Software Center called Firewall Configuration. And then the app that you want is right there. Then click Install punch in your password, and then we'll go ahead and install. All right, then you can close out of Ubuntu software and launch into it. You're gonna need to enter your password again. All right, then just turn this on. If you're a regular home user, you can just leave this as is. This is just to enhance security, especially on a public network. Just in general, you should have your firewall on. Even if there isn't really much of a security benefit, there really isn't a good reason to miss out on a small boost in security that a firewall can give you. Now, if something is being blocked by the firewall for whatever reason, you can just go to report, click on whatever it is, and then hit plus. And then you can just click add, then it'll add a rule that'll allow that application to... But you should only do that if you know for a fact that opening that port will allow the app to work. All right, number six on this list is to encrypt your home folder, which I actually made a video about that. I'll link it up in the card. It's basically just a matter of just installing a package and then running a command from another user account, and then it's set up. Now I'm gonna go through that process real quick, and I'll meet you once I'm done. All right, now that I've got my home folder encrypted, number five on this list is to install GNOME Tweaks. It can be installed right from the Ubuntu Software Center. Just search for GNOME Tweaks. And then the app that you want is listed right here. Just click on it, then click install. All right, and then you can launch into it by going to Show Applications, All, Utilities, tweaks. And there we go. Now in case you're unfamiliar, this application allows you to customize your Linux desktop a lot. For example, you can change your theme, your icons, your cursor. You can add extensions to make the GNOME desktop environment behave differently. By the way, the GNOME desktop environment is what Ubuntu comes with. And then you can change like your mouse behavior. If you want to right click to be a two finger click or just right click if you're using a touchpad. You can change how Windows title bars are laid out. Like if you don't want the minimize or maximize buttons, you don't 
don't have to have them, and you can change their placement. If you want them on the left, you can do that. If you like them on the right, you can keep it that way. And you can even change your fonts, among other stuff. You can play with this on your own time. In fact, I actually made a video showing you how to customize Linux. In particular, how to make Ubuntu look like Mac OS. Like, in this video, I used GNOME Tweaks heavily. I really don't know why all GNOME-based distributions don't just install it by default, because that would make customizing Linux after install just that little bit easier. But anyway, number four on this list is to enable Nightlight. You can do this by going to Settings, Screen display, nightlight, and then just toggle it on, and you can set it from sunset to sunrise, that's the best one. And you can even set a manual schedule if you want to, and you can adjust like the color temperature if you want it more warm or less warm. Sorry it doesn't show in the recording. But anyway, this can actually help you to get a better night's sleep if you find you're having trouble falling asleep if you use your computer within an hour before you go to bed. And this can also help prevent eye strain in a dark room from the blue light since it adjusts the color scheme to the warmer end. Now it'll take a little while to get used to it first, but once you get used to it, you might want to go and disable it at night, and then you might be like, what the heck? How was I looking at the normal color scheme at night? All right, number three is install GNOME software. Now starting with Ubuntu 20.04, Ubuntu started shipping the Snap Store by default for whatever reason. I really do not like this move because it just takes longer to launch just because it's a self-contained app. But then again, flat packs are self-contained and I find they launch quicker. I mean, hey, it's convenient for developers, but I think it just needs work. And besides, snaps just in general just don't let you customize them to the full. And it also does not support flat pack integration. Like in my opinion, Ubuntu 20.04 would just be a better release in general if it did not ship the snap store by default and if it just used GNOME software. If someone at Canonical is watching this, please switch back to GNOME software for the Ubuntu 20.10 release and stay there forever. Or at least until you switch desktop environments. And on the next point release of Ubuntu 20.04, you may even want to switch back to GNOME software for that. Like, I know the feature freeze already happened, but can't you grant it a freeze exemption? And also another suggestion, if an app exists as both a Debian package and a Snap, suggest the Debian package. It just launches faster, and it allows for customization. And besides, Debian packages are designed specifically for the distribution, so they'll just run better. Anyway, now that I've gotten past why this decision to include Snap Store by default is dumb, to be honest with you, we can install GNOME software by just searching for GNOME software. Alright, and then the program you want is listed up here at the top. Then you can just go and install GNOME software, which is basically the Debian package version, or at least in my opinion, the better version of this Ubuntu software package. Alright, then once it's installed, you can just close out of Ubuntu software, and then you can take a look at GNOME software by launching it from the Show Applications menu. Then we'll go ahead and download the software catalog, and while you're waiting, you might as well just remove the Snap Store from the dock, and then add in GNOME software. And then, there we go, now you have the better version, at least in my opinion, of the Software Center. Now, by default, this also does include Snaps. If you like your Debian packages and your Snaps being in one application, by all means, you can go and remove the Snap Store by just removing it from here. However, I like to keep my Debian packages and my Snaps separate, so what you can do, if you want to do that, just go to Software, and then just disable Snap Support. Then enter your password to remove Snap Support and then click restart now, once that pops up. And then there we go, now you just have your Debian packages in here. And then your snaps are in the snap store. That's just the way I like to configure it. But again, if you want your Debian packages and your snaps being in one app, by all means, leave snap support on, then just remove the snap store. All right, number two on this list is to install Flatpak support to get access to even more applications. And I'm actually planning on making a video covering this in the future, but for now you can just follow Follow the instructions on flatpack.org slash setup slash Ubuntu, and I'm gonna get this installed real quick. Alright, then once you've installed Flatpak, you can just open up GNOME software, and then it'll give you this restart prompt. Just click restart now, and then it'll close and open back up, and then it'll go ahead and download the new software catalog. And by the way, Flatpak support is another thing you need GNOME software for, because again, the Snap Store cannot get Flatpak integration, unlike GNOME software. 
Again, I just wish the Ubuntu team had just stuck with GNOME software. It would have just made Ubuntu 20.04 just that little bit easier to use. And then there you go, then you'll have Flatpak apps. Now, one app I like to get from Flatpak is Spotify. Now, I like the Flatpak version just because I can use my mouse cursor with it. Like, it doesn't have that ugly mouse cursor from the X server, unlike the Snap version. That's really the only reason why I'd rather get Spotify from Flatpak than Snap. Besides the fact that there's something about Flatpak's container technology that, that makes Flatpak's faster to launch than Snap's. And if an app exists as both a Flatpak and a Snap, It'll actually give you this source option, so you can switch it to the dev version. I just prefer the dev version because, again, it's actually customizable. Way more customizable than even a flat pack, let alone a snap. For whatever reason, if an app exists both a flat pack and a snap, it'll suggest you that you install the flat pack version for whatever reason. I really don't know the logic behind that. Just like if you had snap support installed, and if an app exists as both a snap and a Debian package, it'll suggest the snap version for whatever reason. I really don't know the logic behind that, but one suggestion to like the GNOME software team, it should probably be the other way around. And then while you're in GNOME software, number one on this list is just install some apps. Yeah, just go play around with this, look for whatever apps you want or need, and then yeah, just get settled in, basically. Even if an app's not in here, there may be like another method to install it, like for example, you might have to add a PPA or a third-party repository, which only do that if you trust the source, by the way. Or you might have to download a dev file, which only do that if you trust the source, by the way. Or very worst case, you could just run a Windows 10 VM, or even dual boot with Windows 10. All right, and then for sticking around to the end, I got a bonus one for you that, because of how many ideas I had for this video, didn't make my top 10, but I thought was worth mentioning anyway. And that is, try the dark mode. Like, just go to settings, appearance, and then you get light, standard, or dark. Now the standard theme is like with the dark title bar. Of course you could just do the light theme, so then you can get the white title bar. And of course, there's the dark theme, which is like the full dark mode. You get the dark title bar with the dark theme. I think the dark mode looks really cool. Ubuntu 20.04 is the first LTS release to ship a dark mode. In fact, from I think Ubuntu 18.10, to Ubuntu 19.10, there was a dark mode, but you have to have GNOME tweaks installed to use it. But now it's right in the settings. I personally think it looks cool. You should really try it. I think you'll like it. And that was my list of 10 things you should do after installing Ubuntu, 11 if you count the bonus. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.